So now, basically, this is the whole circuit for 5 volt and 3 volt, where we have the 5 volt channel and the 3 volt channel. So let's see right now an animation, okay, of 3 volt and the 5 volt circuit, and then I'm going to explain you and to study the circuit one by one. So let's see the animation first. So, what you have say here, here basically we have the 3 volt and 5 volt circuit, okay? So here we have 5 volt and over here we have 3 volt. So this is, this part is the 3 volt, as you can see, channel, we call it 3 volt channel. And this part we call it 5 volt channel, okay? And we have the, the responsible here, the big boss or the control IC that controls this channel and this channel without this IC nothing will be happened over here of course all components are essential and are important but this is the control IC here okay so in order to generate 5 volts and to generate 3 volts we will need or we need the control IC as you can see here TPS 51120 Okay, if you go to Google and look for this reference, you will find that this one is the control IC of 3 volt and 5 volt circuit, and of course, you will find pinouts, etc., and requirements, etc. We need also two MOSFETs for each channel, of course, these two MOSFETs also are very important. We will need capacitors, we have here two capacitors for 5 volt channel. And here also we have two capacitors for 3 volt channel. So the, 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 the purpose of these capacitors is to filter the current or the voltage in order to get a pure and a clean voltage. Okay, basically this one, this is a polarized capacitor. We have here plus and minus. This is electrolytic capacitor. And here we have thermal capacitor. This one is here to eliminate and to remove the noise in the circuit. So the same for here. We have one electrolytic capacitor and one ceramic capacitor, okay? Then we have what? We have basically the inductor, okay? So the inductor is before these two capacitors. We have also here inductor, L4 and L3. L3 for 5 volts, L4 for 3 volts. So the purpose for this inductor is to adjust the current to adjust the current and to get here the right current so it basically in general the inductor increase a little bit the current if the current is not enough okay then we have the pad we have here part two and here we have part one so the meaning on the purpose of the pad in every circuit is what basically the pad is like a bridge Okay, you can move it. If we, we, we move, for example, the pad here, we will isolate this circuit from this part. Okay, but for us as technicians and engineers, we use it usually as the test point. Because if you want to check here whether we have 3 volt or not, you should check the pad here or the pad here. Or even the inductor or the capacitor, okay? So here, basically, we have 19 volts. Here, we have 19 volts. And over here, also, we have 19 volts. So this 19 volt will be applied to this capacitor and to these two capacitors for this channel. Those capacitors will eliminate the noise from the signal. And then here, the 19 volt will be applied here and here in the drain of the MOSFET, as you can see, okay? So it will be applied here in the drain in the MOSFET, okay? So here we have the drain, okay? And here we have the source, three pins, here we have the source, three pins. And over here we have the gate. The gate is connected directly to this IC. Also here the gate is connected directly to this IC. So once the IC deliver or generate the control signals 
as you can see here we have drive as you can see gc drive high for this one and here we have as you can see drive low for this mosfet also the same here it will deliver it or generate drive high two for this mosfet and drive high drive low to for this MOSFET. So once these two MOSFET receives the control signal, then this 19 volt will pass to the next step, but we will get here 3 volt and here 5 volt. I will explain you why, how. So let's see, as you can see, then once these two MOSFETs receive the control signal, signal the 19 volt becomes here 3 volt, and here becomes 5 volt. So here we have question. How? How 19 volt here becomes 3 volt and here change to 5 volt? So please answer me in the comment. I, I want your, your answers in the comment. Okay? I will give you about 24 hours and I will answer in the comment below and I will pin the answer i will pin the answer you know as a first a first comment but i want please your answers how can 19 volt be changed to 3 volt here and here to 5 volt so what is the action that is happened here in order to have this this results okay so please answer me in the comment below. I will, I will give you an answer after 24 hours or even 12 hours, no problem. Okay, or, and even I will explain you the answer in detail in the next video. The next video will be, uh, so uh, the next video, basically, I will upload it today in the same day. Okay, but please answer me, okay? So then we will get here to 3 volts. So this 3 volt will pass through this inductor. Okay? This inductor will adjust the current of this voltage and then it will pass through this capacitor in order to make to filter the currents and of course to make it a continue current. Okay? This one will eliminate the noise and here we will get 3 volts. 3.3 volt a very pure and clean 3.3 volt that is ready to be applied to motherboard components okay and of course you can use the multimeter and check whether you get this 3 volt here or not so the same here 5 volt will be applied to this induction adjusting the current we have filtering component you can check using the multimeter with in the pad whether you get 5 volt or not and over here we will get a pure and clean 5 volts that be that will be applied also for other component in the motherboard like uh, like for example for the hard disk drive motor for optical disk drive motor for usb connectors etc etc the same for 3 volt it will be applied of course for mini connectors it will be applied for the BIOS basic input output system, the pin number 8 of the BIOS because the BIOS, the working voltage for the BIOS is 3 volt also will be applied for the super IO, etc, etc. So please guys follow with me and subscribe and activate the notification in order to receive any coming video because I will explain for you everything on how to repair laptop motherboard step by step using the schematics i will give you my experience i told you before that i have a large and a huge experience especially in laptop motherboard repairing using schematics i i repaired over 2000 laptop over 2000 laptop and so I gain a very huge experience that I want. I want to share it, to share with you my experience without limit. So please don't forget to subscribe, like the video and share the video for other people like you that are interested in this field. And of course, please 
for anyone who want to join me into pastoral page you are very welcome and you are free of course you can join me or not anyway in the patreon page i share and upload other content like tips tricks and secrets on how to repair laptop motherboards and of course i upload uh, laptop motherboard schematics that you can upload for free thank you very much and please answer me in the comment below why we get here 3 volts basically here 19 volt become here 3 volt and 19 volt here become 5 volt why we get this value here so i will let you see the, the animation again and please answer me in the comment below. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.